Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to do an overview of California's new online filing system to maintain your LLC, your corporation, and do any other statewide business filings. The new California system went up in early April 2022 and completely changed how everything looks for doing all of your online filing. So what we're going to do today is just go over where to find everything in the new online filing system, how to create a login, and just generally how it works. I'm going to do some other videos is going to be about specific filing, so about LLCs, corporations, uh, amendments, statements of information, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you go to sos.ca.gov, which is just the general website for the California Secretary of State, you'll find the biz right now, the biz file online is this big, huge, giant link. But if it's not there at the time that you're going on the website, how you would find it is you just go to business and then scroll down and there you will find the biz file online system. So let's go ahead and click on that. So the new system has almost everything, maybe even everything, because I haven't gone through it looking for stuff that's not online filing, but almost everything can now be filed online. This is very, very exciting because California was one of the states where you still had to do a lot of stuff by paper. So now we're finally gonna get online filing for all the documents, not just forming LLCs and corporations and statements of information. But let's go ahead and look at how it works. On the first page, it has a bunch of links here for different resources and things. To be honest, I haven't found this to be helpful or a good way to find things. Look over here on the left side where you have a very simple menu. Home is where you are right now. You have a search and then you have forms. These are the two things that you're going to be using. So let's go ahead and just do a basic search. Let's say you want to see the status of your LLC or corporation right now. Make sure nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to do that for my corporation. EPW Small Business Law. You just type it in the search. And hit the little search button. And then you have to actually scroll down a bit to see the results. The first time I did it, I thought it wasn't working. And there you have the entity information. And it has some basic things here. The initial filing date, the status, etc. So you click on this and then it opens up in a sidebar and in the sidebar it gives you much more specific information. Here we have the filing date, my, this corporation was created in 2012, it's active which means it's not like dissolved or something is wrong with it. And then it has the standing with a bunch of different government agencies. This is really helpful so you can see if it has a problem where do you go to fix the problem? So the Secretary of State, SOS, good standing. FTB, that's the Franchise Tax Board, so that's the California taxes. So if you didn't pay your franchise fee, this is where you would have troubles, but I did, so it says good. Standing agent, I'm thinking what they mean here is that you have a registered agent. Good. This is the a um, the VCFCF, which is for some reason difficult for me to say, is about corporate fraud. I haven't ever had to come up with somebody yet, but. No, no problem there. It was formed in California. It actually says it's a general stock corporation. This is actually wrong. My corporation is a professional corporation, so it should say that here. I, they, I don't think they've completely uh, put everything together. It says the address, principal address is your actual location address for your principal office, the mailing address, uh, the statement of information due date. So this is a really helpful piece of information that I don't think was simple to find before. So every year for a corporation and every two years for an LLC, you have to file a statement of information in California, which is in some other states would be called an annual report. It's some, it's, there's always an annual or semi-annual every other year statement you have to file that really just updates your address, who the corporate offices are, that kind of stuff. It's very basic. In some states, it costs more money. In some states, it's less. In California, this is actually one of the things that we have that's cheap. So my next statement of information is not due until 10-31-22. Typically, this is going to be on the anniversary of when you originally formed. Um, it's like a month, like the end of the month of when you formed. And then I'm my own registered agent. So in here, you can see that you can request a certificate, which is a certificate of status makes a stating that your uh, corporation or LLC is active and legit and doesn't have any problems. You would need that if you want to register as a foreign LLC or corporation in another state. And then you can also view the history and request access. We'll talk about that in a minute. So viewing history is going to pull up a pop-up that has 
the history of your LLC or corporation, starting from the beginning, everything you filed isn't going to be in here. There are some things that they just don't keep on file. So the initial filing is here. You can actually download it. I'm going to download it just to like show you what it looks like. And it's a PDF because back then they had to be filed by paper. <laughs> and so I actually had to type this up and I had to sign it with a pen and everything. Um, and this was filed back on October 1st, 2012. Then you, I, I think what happened here, this is SI delinquency for the year of zero. I didn't file my student information right after my corporation was created. You have to do it within a short period of time. Um, I don't know what the time frame was back in 2012. And I think it, and I remember that I eventually had to pay a late fee. Yes, that is totally a cobbler or has no shoes problem. Um, I think the penalty certification was about that same thing. Then my um, statement of information from 2019 is here and from 2012. So my 2019 statement of information um, has my current address and everything. That's the last time I updated it to my current address. And then my 2021 probably just says no change, right? So how it works in California is when you change things for your statement of information, you change your address, something like that, um, registered agent, whatever, then that's the one, last one will be on file and all the points you previously filed get deleted or not in the system. I don't know what happens to them. Um, if they're anywhere, kept anywhere or not, but they're not, you can't retrieve them. And then when you do a no change, that's when it'll just say no change. And so I probably did that in 2020. I did that in 2021. And then this summer sometime, I will file my next no change. So let's get out of this. Now you can see here, it says request access. So I'm not logged into this system right now. I'm, I, I, I do have a login of, uh, as a lawyer, but I have, I'm not logged in right this second. So if I hit the request access button, what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask me to sign in. I'm not gonna do that right this second. And it wants you to sign in and then request access to the to that system. This is something that's great about this new system, but also is going to be tedious and frustrating. It's great that you actually have to be logged in to file anything about a, a LLC or corporation that already exists. Under the old system, I could just like randomly go and file a statement of information on some LLC or corporation that I have no business doing. Now that would be fraudulent and you're signing things under penalty of perjury, you're authorized to do that, so it's legal. However, it's possible, which was a security hole in the system. Now, however, you actually have to be logged in so they can tie it to a person. How secure that's gonna be, we will see how that works out, but at least it has some kind of security. So let's go back, I'm gonna delete these things I've brought up, and go to forms. Under forms, you're going to have almost every form that you need to ever manage your LLC or corporation in California. So the top is name reservations. Um, I don't actually use that for my small businesses very often, but this can make a lot of sense if you want to reserve a name because you have this idea, but you're not ready to form the LLC or corporation. It might be very handy if you're not planning to start your LLC or corporation really until the next calendar year, but you want to make sure the name is reserved this year so you can go and let's say it's you know november december or something like that you want to reserve it i i honestly would then just create it to start as of january 1st typically we want to do that so we don't have to pay the franchise fee for extra years but um, if the business has, hasn't launched but a lot of big corporations will do name reservations then you have your initial filings for your llc so articles of organization is what you're typically going to be doing, but you can also convert and then you can also register an out of state LLC. For stock corporations, ordinary corporations, there's more things that you can file because there are more types of corporations. So most time you're going to be a general stock corporation. Um, if you're converting from a different state, for example, or a different type of entity, you can have a conversion. There are other kinds of corporations like uh, social purpose and benefit corporations. That's if you have a, corp a business where you want the purpose not to be purely profit, but also to have some kind of social benefit for the world. Uh, there's specific ones for specific types of businesses. Like if you're a professional, like I'm a lawyer and I have a professional corporation. If you're an accountant, if you, you know certain kinds of uh, medical field, you have to have a different kind of corporation. 
Then they have nonprofits, of course, have their own. And then there's other kinds of entities, cooperatives, limited partnerships. Most of that's not going to come up for you guys. Then they have here amendments. This is something that didn't have online filing before. So if you want to change the name of your LLC or you want to change from being member managed to manager managed or manager managed to member managed, this is where you do that. I'll eventually do an entire video. Well, I'm going to do a video where I walk through all this, but I'm going to do a video about when you want to switch from member managed to manager man manage. <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. Generally speaking, it typically is where the owner of the LLC is no longer a human person. Like if you're going to have a trust on the LLC or another corporation or LLC own the LLC, or it's where you have a whole bunch of owners, but there's only one or two people who actually run it on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are the two reasons you typically want to do it. There's nothing wrong with having it be managed or managed in other cases too. The thing I'm actually most excited about is they have conversions and mergers. Those have online forms. Conversions and mergers are where you want to change the entity from LLC to a corporation or corporation to LLC, or you want to change from where you're created. So you want it to be a Nevada LLC or to a California LLC, for example. It used to be you had to do all that by paper. And in many states, if not all st other states, I haven't obviously looked at all 50 states constantly, but you had to do it by paper through the mail. Now we're finally doing it online. There are a few other states that have online for this, and now that I'm thinking about it. But this is very exciting because that was one of the most tedious and expensive things that I did for people. And so now it's online filing, you might be able to actually do it yourself. Because here's the thing about online filing. It's not just that you file it online and that it is going to be faster to process. You don't have to deal with the mail. The great thing about online filing and a good online filing system, which not every state has, is that they are checking things as you file. So as you go through the filing, they're checking to see, is that a valid address? Is that a valid name? Are you filling out this form correctly? So a lot of the problems that used to happen when you would write things on a piece of paper are not going to be a problem now. It makes it much more likely because of that form validation, it's going to make it much more likely that you're not going to mess it up and it's going to go through okay. Also, you're going to be able to do the signature online through their system that you're going to do electronic signature. So you don't have to worry about signing with a pen and then rejecting the signature and all kinds of other ridiculousness that they have done historically. Um, so down here, you have statements of information. This is one of the other things that you're going to be needing to do for your LLC or corporation. Termination. So you can uh, close down your LLC or corporation. Something really important to know is if you decide to no longer have your business, you want to make sure you actually shut it down for many, many reasons, but the most simple, so you don't have to pay the $800, $800 a year franchise fee. Then they have other kinds of amendments, um, changing the registered agent, things like that. And it looks like they also have things that they are planning to add later, but they haven't had anything in that category to add later. There are other categories here about um, UCC re statements and things that probably isn't going to come up for you. The, the UCC thing that might come up for you is if you do a loan through the Small Business Administration that's over, I think it's $25,000, there has to be a UCC statement on file. Uh, maybe it's $100,000. I actually can't remember. Uh, but there's different tiers of loans where a lien gets put on your business formally by filing something with the state. So just something to be aware of. It does not gonna come up for most of you. So to actually do a filing in here, you have to create a login. So let's go and hit the login button. I already have a login um, as a lawyer, but I'm gonna create one for my personal email address just so I can show you how it works. Now, one thing to be aware of if you live in California is it will act as if you already have a login <laughs> because this is a ca.gov website. So if you have a login for like the DMV, which probably most of you do who live in California, it will think that you already have a login, but that's a different login. Anyway, so let's go ahead and sign up an account. So we're going to put in an email address and I'm going to make up a password and then put in a phone number organization, but you don't have to, and then you register. It works. Great. Okay. So this is my personal login. So let's say I want to be able to file a statement of information for my law firm. Now in reality, I would actually do it through my law firm email address, but let's say I'm going to do that. So here it says I can 
choices, now that I'm logged in, is to file an amendment, file statement information, request a certificate, view history, and request access. So if I just went ahead and file statement information, it is going to say that, so it actually lets me just do it. I actually thought you were gonna to have to request access to it, but it doesn't. It actually just lets you do it. So let's go back. Yeah, I don't wanna do this now. And actually, so this system is kind of new, so it's not 100%. Let's say I wanna request a certificate. I was playing around with this earlier, and it wasn't letting me do things with a different login, but now it is letting me do it. So I'm kind of concerned about that. This is one of those things that will likely change over time because as we go on, they're going to tighten up the system. But it does look like you don't actually have to request access. Uh, to become an authorized user's record, a current authorized need to grant you access to request access, click request access. Well, I'm just going to click it and see what happens. So it's going to send an email to my um, business email address to request access to it. But it looks like I actually can go ahead and just file it. Ah, so I can't, oh, so if I hit file amendment, then it does not let me actually file, let's see. It lets me resign as agent, but it does not let me file an amendment or termination because I'm not, one of the things that will also happen here is your business records. So if you are logged in and you've done a filing for your LLC or corporation, then it will list that here. So for my business login, my law firm login, I have a ton of records here, which is all the clients where I have done a filing for them recently. I'm not going to do that right now because then it would show all my client stuff. But um, the this will come up here once it's tied to your record. Now, if you create an LLC or corporation in the last two years and you did it yourself, then it will be tied to your email. If not, then you want to request access. So whoever filed it for you, your lawyer or some online filing service will get you tied to your account. I think it's really important that you're the one that has access to this instead of having just your lawyer or just some you know agency that you hired to do the filing for you because you want to be able to do your own statements of information and be able to get certificates of status and just maintain things and know what's going on, change your address, all that kind of stuff. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. I'm going to be doing videos in the future on how to do all the various different filings using this new online system. If you have any specific filings that you want done, feel free to ask them ask for them in the comments below or ask a question about this online filing system in the comments below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this. And of course, you can always join as a member to help support the channel so I can make more videos like this for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.